then now I'm gonna look into the future. Uh, <laughs> the Tiger's Wife, Taya Obrett. It it is coming out in hardcover. I'm just holding up the advanced copy to have the thrill to tease you. Um, the staff here, almost everybody's read it. Everyone's in love with it. It's so good. <laughs> you guys are gonna the, love it. It's probably our pick of the year. It's definitely the everybody's favorite book of the year so far. Really? Oh, yeah, totally. That's so good to hear. And I. I I've been with Random House Not almost to ruin six years everything now, <laughs> and I've only had one other book where people were reading the first chapter or halfway through the book and all of a sudden calling me saying, this is my favorite book. Oh my gosh, I love it. I have to have three more copies to give to my staff. Um, and it's going to kill you because if you look at uh, her picture or you Google her, she's 25 years old and gorgeous, and she should not be able to write like this. <laughs> but she was part of the New Yorker's uh, top top 30 under 40? 20. 20. 20, 20 under 40. 20 under 20. And what it is, it's set in Eastern Europe, and it's this, this very young female doctor who, after the war, she's just gotten her degree, and she's kind of finding her way in life. And um, her grandfather, who basically raised her, passes away, and he used to read to her from the Jungle Book. So throughout the book, there are references to Shere Khan. It, it's going to make, oh god, I get little goosebumps. But you are going to go out and buy the Jungle Book after you read this. There's just no, no way around it. But the fabulous thing about the book is while she's kind of finding her way, you find out that she went back and researched her family, especially her uh, grandfather's side of the family, and it goes back into um, Eastern European folklore, and it's just phenomenal. And the end will just come with you. It's amazing. So Tiger's Life, I hope you come next week and buy it. <laughs> Large publisher, Random House. We publish thousands of books, literally. And the books I'm going to present tonight are books that I'm just crazy about. They're not necessarily the largest printing, but they're books that we're spending the most money on, but they're books that I dearly love. So you're stuck with these. The first one goes on sale tonight, actually. I Was a Dancer by Jacques D'Ambroise. I don't know if any of you care about ballet, but I didn't. <laughs> and since I've read this book, I've done the three ballets. I'm going to one April 28. I am so smitten. Jacques was eight years old in 1942, growing up in uh, a very tough section of New York. His mother didn't want to leave him on the streets by himself, so she was taking his sister to her ballet lessons, and she forced him to come with her. He was smitten from the second he walked in the door and, and saw what was going on. And he goes on to become, at 15 years old, a member of the New York City Ballet, was a principal dancer for 30 years, was probably, he probably danced with more of the extraordinary women than anyone in, in history. Um, he became George Balanchine's favorite. Balanchine choreographed more ballets for Jacques than anyone else. And this is the story of ballet from, from the side of the, the men who danced it. I've read a number of books, Gauss and Kirkland's included, and it was so difficult for these women. I mean, the weight and the toes and the torture they had to go through. It wasn't like that for the men. I mean, the men could be larger, they could, it, it was strength. It, so for him, it was an extraordinary experience. And this is such a beautiful work about ballet. But there are scenes in here. Uh, Jerome Robbins plays a large part in it. And George Balanch and Gussie Kirkland, they're all there. At one point, Jacques goes to Hollywood. He decides that he's asked to come and be in a couple movies in Hollywood. He dances in Seven Brides for Seven Brothers, if any of you call that movie. And he calls George Balanchine from Hollywood and he said, I love this. This is so much easier than being on the stage in LA. And I have to work a few hours a day. And everyone complains, but it's so marvelous. And Balanchine says to him, come back to New York. Because if you stay in Hollywood, you won't be a dancer anymore. You'll be an actor. And he panics, and he gets on a plane, and he goes back to New York that day. They haven't finished the movie. So I'm dying to see the movie again, because he has to be replaced in the last few scenes. But it, it's just a wonderful book. And I think anyone who cares about this this this, uh, this, this type of you know, theater will just love it. And he's, for the last 30 years of his life, he's been bringing ballet 
to inner city kids in New York. He's an extraordinary man. He's in his 70s now. Still handsome, virile. It's just a wonderful thing. There's a PBS show that, you, that goes, shows from time to time on Jacques Dan Block. If you get a chance, you'll love that. Another collection of stories I really like. This is something I haven't read in, in its entirety, but I keep jumping around in it and picking it up from time to time. I don't know if I'll ever finish the whole thing, but that's maybe kind of the point. Uh, it's a collection, the collected stories of Lydia Davis. She has published since, uh, when did this start? The first novel came out in 1986. Uh, it goes through uh, a couple of years ago. So it's a little 700-page compact paperback that collects all of her short fiction. Uh, there's dozens and dozens of stories. Some of them are only a few words long. Some of them are maybe... 15 to 20 pages. She's kind of a master of short fiction, uh, almost to the point where some of them seem, they, they border on being experimental, but there's something I think really unexpectedly funny uh, about the language, the way she uses language. She's a translator, uh, just uh, uh, came out with a translation of Madame Bovary uh, last year. And uh, uh, I'll give a copy of this to anybody who can tell me who she was married to, or what other famous writer she was married to. In the, uh, in the 80s. Nobody? Nobody? <laughs> Lydia Davis? Lydia Davis? What other also kind of brainiac uh, fiction writer? Briefly? All right. Well, <laughs> she was married to Paul Oster for a few years. Paul oh. Oster. I, I mostly sell the hardcover books, so I'm going to talk about some brand new hardcovers that you should know about. The first is called um, You Know When the Men Are Gone. Um, this is one of those books that you know we, we love a lot of our books, but then there are certain books that we love more than others. This is one of those. Um, within Penguin, this is the book that I think we're all the most passionate about. Um, it's a it's from the it's from Amy Einhorn, who's the editor of The Help. Um, and so whenever she publishes a book, we pay attention to see what, what's next. Um, and this is the stories of the, the women, children, families left behind when the soldiers go off to Iraq and Afghanistan, set in Fort Hood, Texas. And it's stories that we, you just don't get in the evening news, in the newspapers. And, it's so, and she's a military wife, so she's, she's, lived, she's living this life. But she's a great writer, and this is a book that um, really human stories that you just don't get, you're not going to get anywhere else. Um, Amy Einhorn said that when she got the manuscript, this is very rare, she didn't have to change a word of it. It was perfect as is, um, and that just never happened. So we're just selling this one reader at a time, and slowly but surely you're going to all hear about, you know, what's better. One of my favorite books that's actually publishing tomorrow, but I convinced them to pull it out of the receiving, and they're going to sell it tonight if you want it, is Dead End Gene Pool, which is Cornelius Vanderbilt's great, 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 great granddaughter. And she's just, it's not on the sheets because I didn't realize exactly that we were going to be talking, I thought we were talking to staff. So I'm mostly going to be talking about future books, but it's in hardcover, but it is for you special tonight, five copies in paperback on sale. But it's a great story of a spoiled little rich girl, which <laughs> the things she does with her brother are just hilarious. The rich really are different. It really, really, I mean, it's, I read a couple of scenes over and over and over to my friends because it's a great, great book. So And uh, between a rock and a hot place, why 50 is not the new 30. <laughs> As uh, Lewis Black says, that's why they have a different number. Uh, but Tracy Jackson, Tracy's up and around. I needed something a little bit fun to talk about. It's just really fun, you know, essays on, on uh, you know, the change and what a lot of us are going through. Male or female. Um, Caribou Island by David Van. David Van's, David Van, does that look depressing as hell? This is Alaska. <laughs> David Van, his first book was a paperback original that we published called Legend of a Suicide. It was picked as a New Yorker uh, book club pick. It was a bestseller in France. It got great coverage in the New York Times and the LA Times. 
uh, it was basically uh, a, a book about the death of his, a suicide of his father. Uh, in this, he goes into the death of a marriage, and you open up the, the book to page one, and you're mired in this two people unloading wood from a boat in the rain in Alaska in a godforsaken island. Uh, it's called Caribou Island. It is really, really a downer book. A friend of mine... <laughs> But if you like the pressing, it's, it's, he's a brilliant writer. He's a brilliant writer. But a friend of mine up in um, the King's English, Ann Holman, who runs the King's English up in Utah, big bookstore in Salt Lake City, called me after I'd been bugging her to read it, and called me a couple days later and said, okay, I finished it. Oh my God, the worst two characters I ever encountered in a book. And my comment was, but you kept reading, because David Van keeps you reading, uh, for better or worse. But he's brilliant. 